The size of the Amazon jungle is unimaginably large. One could enter from its easternmost edge, trek 3,000 kilometers in a westward direction, and not yet emerge from the thick canopy. This refuge for 10% of the world's species has long been viewed as wild and pristine, rarely affected by humanity, and providing a window into the planet before people expanded to every continent and wreaked havoc on it. However, it now appears that this notion is wholly incorrect. We are beginning to understand that the Amazonian environment and ecosystem are far from unspoiled and have been changed by enormous ancient settlements. Thanks to the knowledgeable guest on Joe Rogan, this information has gained widespread attention. What exactly is the Amazon rainforest? Was there ever a vast loss of civilization in the Amazon rainforest? Let's find out. The Amazon River and its tributaries drainage basin, which spans more than 2,100,000 square miles, that's 5.5 million square kilometers, is located in northern South America. Almost 40% of the South American continent is covered by the biggest rainforest on the globe. These nine nations, Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, Bolivia, Peru, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana, all have portions of this enormous broadleaf forest. Brazil takes up about 60% of the Amazon jungle, making up for more than half of it. The majority of the Amazon basin in South America is covered by the Amazon rainforest, which is home to the world's largest and most diverse tropical rainforest area and accounts for half of the world's remaining rainforests. One in 10 known species on the globe calls it home, along with 3,000 varieties of freshwater fish, 40,000 species of plants, and more than 370 distinct kinds of reptiles. Around 30 million people live in the Amazon, including 350 indigenous and ethnic groups who depend on wildlife for food, clothing, and medicine. We formerly believed that the Amazon rainforest was largely uninhabited, yet it now appears to have been home to extensive towns whose residents changed. The Amazon was inhabited for a very long time before Europeans came to the Americas, and it wasn't only by a few small isolated tribes. Millions of people lived there in a civilization that created enormous earthworks and raised an abundance of fish and vegetation. In the Amazon rainforest, there is a hill that covers two acres of space. Its name is Monte Grande, and at first glance, it appears to be just another hill. Maybe an especially steep one, but it was still just an overgrown earth mound. It was disregarded for centuries, and eventually, as Peru's villages and towns grew larger and more apart in the Amazon, farmers even built their homes on top of it. Then they began to dig. Shards of ancient pots began to appear when the farmers plowed the area. They quickly realized that they weren't just rusty kitchenware. These artifacts from the past date back more than a thousand years. Their houses were preserved as archaeological sites. When Carino Oliveira and his colleagues began excavating the Monte Grande Hill in 2010, they quickly realized they weren't working on a hill at all. Around 3,000 years ago, a long-forgotten civilization in the Amazon forest constructed a huge pyramid there. Everything was transformed by the Monte Grande Pyramid. It was the first concrete evidence that prehistoric civilizations had flourished in the Amazon rainforest. There is little doubt that South America's ancient civilizations were thriving, but until recently, it was thought that the Amazon itself is a dangerous region that few risked entering for an extended period of time. Archaeologists think that the few ancient residents were a migratory group that lived in close quarters. They would move around, establishing the occasional flimsy farm, before moving on. When the Spanish conquistadors first landed in South America, they recounted accounts of vast villages in the Amazon, supporting vast fleets of boats and housing farms, but there was never any evidence to substantiate their claims. Every piece of archaeological evidence we could locate indicated that no one had lived in the Amazon for a long enough period of time to construct a home. Yet discoveries like Monte Grande's are altering a country's history. At its height, the Amazon may have been home to as many as 5 million people, according to current estimates. They created societies and civilizations that have been entirely forgotten over time. 
we'll only ever be able to identify these people by searching through their skeletal remains. Archaeologists have since discovered that Monte Grandi's builders lived in a highly advanced civilization. They didn't only construct one pyramid and disappear, it was initially constructed about 1000 BC, but at least eight times it was altered and reconstructed. They had lived in that one place for more than a thousand years until their dominion fell. By the end, they had erected offices where kings oversaw their subjects and six-foot or 1.83 metre walls to defend them. They created a grid of houses across the riverbed, practised a complex form of their own religion, and participated in a sophisticated commerce network that included all of contemporary Peru. Their remains only provide a faint indication of the full millennium of their history. The information we have about them is somewhat piecemeal, but the enormous pyramids that they left behind provide a fascinating window into their religious practices. The researchers discovered a second pyramid, a mile from Monte Grande, but this one has a much grimmer story to tell. The remains of 22 children were interred in the second pyramid. They appeared to be wasting away when they died, as evidenced by the fact that many of their bones exhibited symptoms of starvation and illness. They were probably brought here when they were sick and certain to pass away. A mother may leave her cherished, dying child in the care of the shamans in this location, which was separate from the city. They were not healed by the shamans. They lacked a miracle cure to restore the health of these children. The kids that were taken here were treated like human sacrifices rather than being helped. The children's bones looked to have undergone severe abuse. A young mother rests there with her newborn child, both of them decapitated, while a six-year-old is interred there with his pet guinea pig. The priest's bones are then located apart from all of them. He must have been significant because he is known as the Lord of Snails by archaeologists. Although he passed away 2,800 years ago, quite early in their history, he nevertheless had the most opulent grave they have ever discovered. 180 snail shells were used to completely encase the Lord of Snails before burial. His eyes are fixed upward toward the east, the rising sun and the dawn. The people who once resided here have left no written word behind. We have no idea what they wrote, if they were even literate we are unaware of their names. We were completely unaware of their existence until recently, let alone the existence of any prehistoric civilizations in the Amazon. All we have left of them are their ruins and their bones, but even that paints a remarkable picture of the life of a people who have lain in obscurity for the past 2,000 years. In addition, the Spanish explorer Francisco de Orellana claimed that when searching for El Dorado in 1542, he and his soldiers came across strong warrior women. He would subsequently refer to the river they were traveling down as the Amazon, a reference to the women from Greek mythology. They were the most powerful women ever, according to the legend. They were once thought to be a clan of strong, independent women who had rebelled against the male-dominated civilization. They used to dwell in remote locations. They would shun men from their culture and wage war against them. They were, perhaps, the first extreme feminists as we now refer to them. The majority of what is known about the fabled Amazons comes from myths. There aren't many historical records that can be used to demonstrate the emergence and development of Amazonian culture. According to tradition, they were a race of fierce warrior women who lived in Asia Minor's Themyscira city near the Thermodon River. An intriguing contrast to the male-dominated culture of the past, their society was strictly and solely run by women. Males were not allowed to join their culture unless it was specifically for mating or to become slaves. Presumably, for this reason, Herodotus refers to them as androctones, which means killers of men and Homer calls them women who go to war like men in the Iliad. They did live like soldiers, and their only goal in life was to wage war on men. The girls were introduced to the subtleties of combat at a young age. Their weapons included a bow and arrow, labris, a double-edged axe, and a crescent-shaped shield. 
As horse trainers and riders, the Amazons excelled beyond comparison. The removal of a girl's right breast was strange, but probably acceptable from the Amazon's point of view. A scorching hot bronze tool would be used to cauterize the right breast while the victim was still a girl. To mutilate and remove any obstacles to using a spear or drawing an arrow was considered a necessary evil. The custom may have given the moniker Amazons, which is derived from the ancient Greek term Amazoi, which translate to either breastless, full-breasted, or not touching men. Full-breasted appears to be paradoxical, but that is how the Amazons have always been depicted, whether in sculptures or paintings. These women were more in tune with fighting than with feminism. Because of their belief that marriage was akin to servitude to a man, Amazons were not allowed to wed. They would, however, frequently mate with attractive captives of war or with men from neighboring societies in order to perpetuate their race. The prisoners would either be executed or used as slaves once their purpose had been served. A male child experienced a fate similar to that of his father. Their mums would either kill or send away any boys that were born. He was occasionally kept alive so that he could mature and be utilized for sexual pleasure or as a source of human sperm. On the other hand, a girl was cared for, fed, and raised primarily as a warrior, but nonetheless as a lovely woman when she was born. In the popular imagination of today, the Amazons are portrayed as living in remote forested areas where they can defend themselves from invasions by men and wearing leather clothing that only covers certain body parts. Yet they were pictured wearing long dresses that reached the knee in prehistoric clay jars. Throughout the beginning of time, the moon has represented everything that is feminine and lovely. The Amazons were more than just stunning women who lived wild lives. They once revered the moon as well. They may have picked up their moniker from the ancient Circassians who were also known to worship the moon. The word Amazon originally denoted from Moon Mother or Mother of the Forest in the Circassian language of antiquity. Even though it seems like there used to be a lot of human activity in the Amazon, many historic sites have been virtually untouched for 500 years or more. Yet the Amazon is evolving quickly. To sustain farming, ranching, energy production and the roads and dams needed for these activities, forests are being cleared. Many of those untouched regions with their buried remnants of ancient cultures won't last for very long. Projects that strive to preserve the remnants of the past before they are lost to time are necessary. We are losing the Amazon, which means we are running out of time. And we'll lose things we didn't even know were there. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.